Hello and welcome to Suffolk University. I'm delighted that you are watching this video. My name is Stephanie Kendall. I'm the Associate Director and Clinical Training Director for the Suffolk University Counseling Health and Wellness Center. And my name is Tracy Allen. I'm a Family Nurse Practitioner and the Assistant Director for Medical Operations at the Counseling Health and Wellness Center at Suffolk. We would like to start by talking to you about who we are as a center. So there are three basic components of CHW. The first, the C is for counseling services. We have um, for all students, an opportunity for you to talk with counselors at any time and for any reason. The H is for health services. We, we offer all sorts of medical care as well as vaccine delivery and preventative medicine. And the W is for wellness education. We actually do quite a lot of um, peer education on Suffolk campus, and we try to provide you with tools to optimize your, your health and your wellness while you're a student at Suffolk. We're gonna share with you some overview things to know about our center. We are one of many uh, resources for Suffolk students. And what's unique about the resources I think that we provide is that we provide a safe and supportive environment for all Suffolk students, including international and into students. We, our services are free for all students uh, and our services are confidential. And I'm gonna explain what each of those mean. So from a supportive and, and safety perspective, what we want to share with you is that we work with all Suffolk students, domestic students, international students, international into students, and we are really attuned to the ways that each student may have different needs um, based on culture, based on language, based on familiarity with the US healthcare system, or even with the idea of counseling services or medical services in, in a US context. So we are really committed to staying informed about what our students need and to figuring out collaboratively with students what might be helpful for them given their unique uh, personalities and, and background. The second thing to know about our students, our services, are that they are all free. So there is no charge for any time you would seek counseling services, any time you would seek medical services. Um, your lab tests, if those are needed from a medical perspective, um, would be charged to the Suffolk Health Insurance, which is something you will have um, because you will be an INTO student. And if you are ever needing to be seen by somebody off campus, so an off campus referral to a specialist or for some kind of longer term care, then that would also be charged um, to the student health insurance. Um, immunizations are free uh, for students who have the Suffolk student health insurance. So that's something important for you to know as you think about, about joining us here in Boston on campus. The final thing I'll share is about confidentiality. And we are a service provider like any other medical or mental health provider in the US. So we're subject to the same rules of confidentiality. So we keep your information, whether that's about medical care or counseling care, strictly confidential. Um, and unless we have permission from you to share that information, it is held only within our office. So we're a really secure and safe place for you to come with all kinds of concerns and questions that you might not know where else to go for when they relate to your mental health or, or any kind of medical needs. Importantly, sometimes students need a place to talk about things that they don't quite know if it's okay to talk to other people about. And again, that could be about mental health or about medical services. Um, the only other source on campus that's confidential like we are is the Interfaith Center. And I'm sure you'll learn about that um, through your orientation learnings. But our Interfaith Center, uh, Amy Fisher, who's our university chaplain, also is a place where students can go and, and talk about things in a confidential way. Next, we'd just like to highlight a few uh, pieces involved in navigating healthcare at Suffolk and um, in the United States. As, as many of you are aware, and I believe you've learned about this elsewhere in your orientation, um, in order to receive healthcare here, we need, everyone needs to have health insurance. So as an INTO student, you are automatically enrolled in the student health insurance plan. And it's a very good plan that will cover the costs of um, the care that you'll need while you're here. 
This second statement here is about um, the Department of Public Health in Massachusetts and the requirements that they have put forth in terms of immunizations or vaccinations. This is protection against infectious disease. And everyone, regardless of uh, whether they're international or not, they have to have certain vaccines in order to be students here. So you'll have the opportunity to upload your information and we'll talk more about this at the end of the presentation. But we're also here for you if you have any questions at all about this immunization piece because it can be a little bit um, a little bit overwhelming sometimes. So we're here to help you. The third thing we want to say is about um, alcohol and drug awareness. This um, will be offered to you during orientation. There, there will be various trainings that you'll take, um, take part in as part of your orientation process. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about counseling services. And I know that there are vastly different understandings about mental health and what is appropriate to talk about or how best to be supported. And that ranges both within people within the U.S. and their, their perspective on counseling, but also around the world um, in the perspective on counseling and mental health. Um, and because we work with all students from all over. Uh, we really are wanting students to not wait when they feel like something might be off or they feel like maybe they want some extra support or need some extra support. We really want students to come to us and ask for it. And we work um, with a lot of international students um, in the counseling center. So I wanna tell you a little bit about what types of services we offer. So we offer short-term individual and group counseling, and that means that we really work to understand you know, what a student might need and maybe what's getting in the way of academic work or what's getting in the way of social adjustment to Suffolk for whatever reason. Um, and we work really hard to get students kind of back on track, um, talking about coping methods and, and things like that. We also offer psychiatric medication services if that's needed. We don't require that um, of any student, but it is available for students who are engaged in counseling with us should they desire that. Suffolk also offers 24-7 um, access to support and crisis response. So we have crisis services during the day if students really become overwhelmed during the day. They can come and speak with one of us anytime during the day. Um, but also overnight and on the weekends, we have a response system for students who are in crisis um, because we know that emotional needs don't limit themselves um, to our crisis hours um, during the week. We also have a case manager who facilitates referrals. And I, um, I mentioned before about off-campus referrals to specialists or for ongoing care. So our case manager can help you get connected. And some students prefer to see a, to see a provider off campus. So our case manager can help with that as well. We also offer a lot of consultation to Suffolk faculty, staff, and that includes into faculty and staff, as well as families that's desired about uh, student mental health. And again, we don't reveal any information about whether or not a student is seeing one of us, but we do offer support for staff or faculty or families and trying helping them figure out how to support students generally, um, as opposed to talking about anything confidential unless we have permission to do that. Uh, the counseling staff also provides educational programs about mental health. They'll actually, who they will be who will do your alcohol and drug awareness training that Tracy just mentioned. So you'll get to know some of us as we work in that way as well. I kind of alluded to this already, and I'm not going to read this list to you, but these are some of the reasons that students seek counseling. And the most common reasons that students come are for anxiety, depression, or struggling in relationships. And that's no different at Suffolk than it is all uh, across uh, the country in terms of higher ed. And there's lots of different reasons that people struggle uh, and want maybe want to talk to a counselor. And we're really collaborative in figuring out how can we help students figure out what's getting in the way manage that or, or cope with that and then get back to their academics or back to their social lives um, in ways that they really want to. So the second piece of who we are at Counseling Health and Wellness is the health piece. We provide health services just like other doctor's offices that you've been, um, that you've been to before. Our clinic is staffed primarily by nurse practitioners. Um, I myself am a family nurse practitioner and we do essentially what doctors do in terms of diagnosing and treating illness, disease, and injury. We offer 
Uh, we order and interpret diagnostic testing when indicated. We provide prescriptions for both acute illness and also any kind of um, long-term or ongoing illness or infection. We also provide contraceptive counseling, birth control, um, and follow-up care for all sorts of uh, different medical concerns. So that's the, the acute medical care piece. We also do a lot around prevention of illness and disease. Um, we offer immunization. So if there's anything that you were not able to obtain prior to your arrival at Suffolk, we can give you those immunizations, including flu shots and HPV vaccination. We also offer physical exams, sports physicals, and other types of physicals when indicated. Um, we can screen for cervical cancer. We can screen for tuberculosis and we provide a lot of health education as well. The next slide just talks about some reasons why students might seek health services. Um, we can advise folks about any kind of illness, how to treat a cold or a flu, um, any kind of skin rash, allergic reaction, or like I said before, any, any pre-existing medical condition. Um, we can also do a lot of tests on site that don't even need to be sent to a laboratory. We can get the results quite quickly for things like strep or mono or pregnancy, if you're concerned about that. Um, also, lots of, we can give you lots of information about contraceptive methods, about STIs, and again, any sorts of referrals that you might need. So the, the point of this is to say that there is nothing that you cannot come to us um, to inquire about or to obtain care for. And if we can't help you, then we'll, we'll make sure to plug you in with someone who can. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about the third branch of CHW, which is our wellness education. And this is uh, really primarily led by our supers or our university peer educators. And they provide a lot of wellness-based programming across campus to all students on campus, really looking at things like stress management, self-care, healthy eating, healthy sleep, sexual health, and substance use. Uh, concerns. And so they're really engaged across campus in helping students figure out how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Um, so their work in the coming year will largely be remote. Um, and so we're going to be doing a lot of virtual programming to reach students wherever they are in this time of COVID. Uh, the CHW does have a wellness resource center, and this is a wonderful space um, and a space for students to come and relax and hang out and learn information about different types of health topics, as well as engage in person with our peer educators. Due to COVID, our Wellness Resource Center will be closed this fall, but we are hoping that as soon as conditions allow, we'll be reopening that space for students. Stephanie just mentioned uh, COVID-19. So we just wanted to say a few things about how this pandemic has changed the way that we function, but only temporarily, hopefully. Um, we wanna make sure that you understand that you can call CHW with any sort of questions about COVID-19 symptoms, contagion, any kind of concerns that you have, and you can speak to one of the nurse practitioners about that. Um, we continue and have continued since we went remote um, to offer counseling services via telehealth as well as health services via telehealth. Um, we will continue to do so and we'll also be able to provide um, on-site counseling and medical care when indicated. Um, we will continue, as Stephanie said, to provide virtual connection groups and again on site as soon as it's safe to do so. Similarly, the wellness education and all the events that are hosted by the supers will be offered either virtually or in person when we can. <clears throat> I want to just take a moment to speak again about the immunizations that I referred to earlier in the presentation. Um, this slide spells out exactly what is required by the state of Massachusetts in order to be a student um, at any institution of higher education in our state. There are five specific vaccines that are required, some of which you will be able to, to uh, obtain before you come to Suffolk, but a few of which you will probably need to get once you're here. And we do recognize that a lot of this terminology might be a little overwhelming. Um, these words might be strange and I wish I could interpret them <laughs> for you, um, but I am here for you as is every member of the INTU staff. If you have any questions or concerns about what this means, um, how to upload the information, you can certainly come to us. I also wanted to note that the flu vaccine, as well as an immunization for COVID-19, 
will be required once they are available. And that's just in the interest of protecting everyone's health. Um, it, it's a matter of time before we have a COVID-19 vaccine. We do expect an influenza vaccine in early September. So more information will be coming about those. This slide gives you the, uh, the website, the student health portal, where you can upload your information. We encourage you to do that uh, before you arrive on campus. And also please bring whatever immunization information you have with you when you come to Suffolk as well. You can simply log in with your, your username and password uh, for Suffolk when you go to the portal. I said this once already, but I'll say it again, that any questions you have can be handled by the INTU staff and or you can send an email to health at suffolk.edu and someone like myself will be able to field your questions. You know, I wish we were together in person where we could show you our office or we could walk you by our office or, or you could take a tour right at this very moment. But what we wanted to provide for you is our location. We are in 73 Tremont, which is one of the significant office buildings that hosts Suffolk University right in downtown Boston. And on this slide, you can see our phone number, you can see our website address. If you wanna revisit any information about immunizations or about our services, you can find that out on our website. That will continue to be updated with any changes related to COVID. Um, and again, our email address that Tracy just talked about is right down there. So we really look forward to welcoming you uh, when you get here, um, whenever that is, and whenever you're able to come here safely, um, we really look forward to welcoming you in person and hoping to get to know a few of you as, during your time at Suffolk. We look forward to meeting you soon. Take care. <laughs>